It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Imagine yourself for the first time reading the Bible in its entirety, and the first two chapters, you realize that something is very strange. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, God said, Let us make men in our image after our likeness, and let them have domination over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heaven, and over the livestock, and all over the earth, and over every creepy thing that creep on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. In that particular context, the God of the Bible created both male and female at the same time. Okie dokie, no problem. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. The Lord God said, It is not good that man shall be alone. I will make a helper for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God hath formed every beast of the field and every border of the heavens, and brought them to the man to see what he can call them. And rather the man call every living creature that was his name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heaven and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept he took one of his ribs and closed up his place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God has taken from the man he made a woman and brought her to her man. And then the man said... This is the last bone of my ribs, and the flesh of my flesh. She should all be called a woman, because she's taken out of man. If you're a skeptic like me, and read those verses for the first time, it seems as though that these two verses are directly contradictory. Largely, because on one verse it says that man and female were created at the same time, but the next verse it says that men were created first, and that women was created later. So what is the exact rationalization to actually justify two separate stories? For today's episode of Comparative Mythology, we're going to concentrate on a character that is called Lilith. The earliest record of Lilith in ancient Mesopotamian culture comes directly from a nana and a hoopalupa tree. Then a serpent, who cannot be charmed, made its nest in the roots of the hoopalupa tree. The Anzu bird set its young in the branches of the tree, and the dark May Lilith built her home in the trunk. O oh, Gilgamesh, in the days when the face were decree, when the abundance overflow in the land, when the domains of the great gods were divided, then I plucked the hoopalupa tree from the Euphrates, then I planted in my holy garden, and trended, waiting for my shining stone and luxurious bed. Then a serpent nests in the roost and could not be charmed. The Anzu bird set its young in the branches, and the dark maned Lilith built her home in the trunk. I wept. Oh, how I wept! Yet they would not leave my tree. Gilgamesh fastened his armor of fifty manas around his chest, the fifty manas weigh as little to him as fifty fetters. He lifted his bronze axe, the axe of the row, weighing seven talents and seven manas to his shoulder. He entered Nanana's holy garden. Gilgamesh struck the serpent who could not be charmed. The Anzu bird flew his young to the mountains, and Lilith smashed her home and fled to the wild, uninhabited places. Then Gilgamesh loosened the roots of the hoopalupa tree. Although Lilith makes appearance in this story, it's not necessarily the most famous story of the bunch when it comes down to this particular character. The most famous story comes directly from the alphabet of Shrek, and it was actually composed roughly around 700 to 1000 BCE. When God created the first man, Adam alone, God said it's not for man to be alone, so God created a woman for him from the earth like him, and call her Lilith. Day, Adam, and Lilith promptly began to argue with each other. She said, I will not lie below, and he said, I will not lie below, but above, since you are fit for being below, and I for being above. She said to him, the two of us are equal, since we are both from the earth, and they will not listen to each other. 
Since love saw how it was, she uttered God's unfathomable name and flew away into the air. Adam stood in prayer before his maker and said, Master of the universe, the woman you gave me fled from me. The Holy One, immediately the pastry angel, saw Noi, saw Sonoi, and Selangelo after her to bring her back. God said, if she wants to return well and good, if not, she must accept that a hundred of her children will die every day. The angels pursued her and overtook her in the sea in the raging waters, the same waters in which the Egyptians will one day drown, and told her God's orders, and yet she did not want to return. They told her they would drown her in the sea, and she replied, Leave me alone. I was only created in order to sicken babies. If they are boys from birth to day 8, I will have power over them. If they are girls from birth to day 20, when they heard her reply, they plead for her to come back. She spoke to him in the name of the living God, that whenever she will see them on her names or of their image, and on the list, she would not overpower that baby, and she accepted that a hundred of her children will die every day. Therefore, a hundred of the demons die every day, and therefore they write the names of the three angels of the young children. When Lilith sees them, she remembers her oath, and the children is protected and healed. Lilith also makes an appearance in Isaiah chapter 34. Her nobles shall be no more, nor shall kings be claimed there. All her princes are gone, her castles shall be overgrown with thrones, her fortunes with twizzles and bears. She shall become an adore for jackals and a hunch for aftridges. Wild cats shall be met with desert beasts, slayers shall be called one another. There will be the Lilla for pros and find herself a place to rest. There are also direct references to Lilith in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And I, the instructor, proclaim his glorious splendor as to frighten and terrify all the spirits of the destroying angels, the spirits of the bastards, demons, Lilith, haulers, and those who fall upon man wanting to lead them away from the spirit of understanding and to make their heart and their desolate during the present dominance of wickedness. One final example of Lilith is probably Greek mythology. In the Latin Bible for Isaiah chapter 34 verse 14, they use the word Lamia for that particular translation. So what exactly are the characteristics of Lamia in Greek mythology? Belus had a beautiful daughter, Lamia, who ruled in Libya, and on whom Zeus, in acknowledgement of her favors, bestowed the singular power of plucking out and replacing her eyes at will. She bore him several children, but all of them except Scylla were killed by Hera in a fit of jealousy. Lamia took her revenge by destroying the children of others, and behaved so cruelly that her face turned into a nightmarish mask. Later she joined the company of the Impusai, lying with young men and sucking their blood while they slept. What do you guys think about Lilith? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.